Well, it looks like Intel's next CPUs are gonna have a lot of cash, but the bigger question we need to answer is why is it always Pokemon and Digimon leaking all this stuff about CPUs and GPUs? Like, that seems kind of weird. But anyway, Raichu over here seems to have a CPU Z screenshot showing, uh, you know, it's, it's clipped obviously, but showing cache configurations. And he is claiming that this uh, should be, uh, you know, upcoming Intel chips. And then we also get this diagram, which I'm going to be honest, I don't understand uh, what a non-accuracy test actually indicates. <laughs> that is not something that is in my wheelhouse of, um, of PC knowledge, but here you go. He's giving an ADL and RPL non-accuracy uh, test lines here. So for those of you who do know what that means, why don't you sound off in the comments? Was that a, a good looking graph? <laughs> anyway. Um, so the thing is that this, this total cash amount would be quite high. Now he doesn't seem to be giving us a specific model number for this CPU, but if we look over at this video cards article who is ah, reporting on ah, this, um, uh, reporting on this leak, uh, they have this nice chart here comparing the 12th gen Alder Lake against the 13th gen uh, Raptor Lake here with these specs added in. So if you look at the um, L2 cache and L3 cache here, um, uh, we can see the numbers going from eight by 1.25 megabytes on the big cores to eight by two megabytes on the big cores and jumping from two by two megabyte on the small cores to four by four megabyte on the small cores. Um, the L3 cache jumping up from 30 to 36 and that's getting the total cache up from 44 to 68. That's a pretty big jump. And we've seen from things like the uh, Ryzen 5800X3D, for example, that having lots of cache can significantly improve gaming performance in many games. So I think that we can just only consider this a good thing, although we obviously don't have many more specifics than this to go on at this point. Now, speaking of more specifics, how about a new NVIDIA GPU? I know the GTX 1630 might not be the most exciting GPU in the world for you high-end enthusiasts, and it might not even be the most exciting GPU in the world for the low-end, <laughs> low-price enthusiasts, but I think this could have a place uh, depending on if it has a low-profile prof low design, an extremely low price point, and what exactly its encoding abilities end up being. So I think this could have a place. Although given the specs that we're seeing here, don't expect a powerful gaming CPU coming from this. Now, once again, it's kind of weird to see a 16 series GPU launching at this point. Um, but the main update we have compared to yesterday's video is we now have actual CUDA core counts and bit bus memory amount and a launch date, guys. This is apparently coming out at the end of this month. Now, in my last video, some people were like, why aren't they calling it the 30 series or the 20 series? Well, calling it 20 or 30 series would both have implications to possibly the architecture they're using, but would also imply um, ray tracing support. Now they are using GTX to be clear that there is no ray tracing support here, but I think the biggest thing we can learn from the 16 here is that it's it's definitely not gonna be a ray tracer. And honestly, guys, even if it did at this price point, you wouldn't want to, but it also indicates that it probably wouldn't have a DLSS support, um, which is you know disappointing. It would be really cool to see like a 3030 for cheap that had DLSS support, but that does not appear to be what we're getting here. Now, what do these numbers actually mean? Well, what they're saying is that this card is based off of the GTX, uh, GTX 1650 with some huge cutbacks. They say necessary cutbacks. These are huge cutbacks, but with the caveat of um, increasing the clock speeds to kind of make up for uh, maybe some of the performance loss. Guys, this is half of the CUDA cores of a 1650. And the 1650 is already not a super powerful gaming <laughs> GPU by any stretch of the imagination. Also, it has a 64-bit memory bus, which is once again, half of the GTX 1650. So they've cut both the CUDA cores and memory bit uh, uh, bus in half. However, 
I would expect better than 50% of the performance of a 1650 due to the clock speeds, which according to, again, this is, uh, again, not official information from NVIDIA. I don't know if I said it yet, but this is leaked information from video cards, but they seem to have, be very confident in their sources. Anyway, according to their information, the GPU clock goes up to 1800 megahertz, which is significantly faster than a 1650. Uh, which should make up, like I said, for some of that performance uh, gap that we'd get by cutting all the CUDA cores and uh, memory but bus in half. Now, um, that should also, again, uh, help is that they're using GDDR6 memory. And the memory is clocked at 12 gigabits per second, which would get the theoretical bandwidth up to 96 gigabytes per second. So that does help make up for a lot of that cut down bus. But again, this will be weaker than a 1650. Also by clocking this high, uh, their key, that means the TDP is actually not being reduced um, by the information that they have. So they have this nice, nice chart here. If we wanna look at how does it stack up against uh, some 1650 models. Now, um, so, oh, and by the way, when I was saying cut in half, the die is cut in half, but you know, there's 1650 models that, that you know, aren't actually using like 1024. Anyway, but here, here's how it compares. We get the clock speed boost, but a, a lot less CUDA cores. Um, memory clocks are higher. GDDR6 versus, you know, some 1650s had GDDR5, although there were GDDR6 models. Yeah, the, the, uh, <laughs> the memory bus really cut down, but the bandwidth, you know, is a lot lower. You know, this thing is, is gonna be weak. I think the main thing here, like I said, is what price does this come in at? If it's incredibly cheap and in good supply with like a low profile design, the fact that it could feed off PCIe power. And again, if it had some good encoding and decoding, I think this could have a place, but a lot depends on that pricing. This is not gonna be uh, even great as a budget gaming GPU with these, with these kinds of specs. All right, now the last main thing I'd like to talk to you about today is, uh, so in the past I reported on Radeon's preview driver coming out, which claimed to have massive boosts for DX11 performance. Well, just this morning, Hardware Unboxed, please check out their channel if you haven't, they have the uh, these 50 game benchmarks that they do is just so amazing for getting a big picture of the actual average performance of various updates like this one, as well as GPUs versus each other. And what we're looking at here is one of their slides, and I would fully encourage you to go check out their full video, which I will, of course, link in the description today, um, because they have results for both 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. And in the interest of not just stealing all of their content, but instead uh, drawing some conclusions, but pointing you to their full video, we're just gonna look at the 1080p results. So what are we actually looking at here? They tested a uh, 6700 XT. And so this is a 6700 XT against itself. It's, it's the preview driver versus the previous driver, that uh, which is 22.5.1, that also actually came out on the same date, but as a main launch driver uh, to support the 50, uh, you know, a 6x50 XT update, updated GPUs. And this is the preview driver versus that. So to be clear, these DX11 uh, performance boosts are, are in that preview driver, not a main driver release. However, in some games, they did see double digit performance gains, uh, like in Watch Dogs Legion, Death Stranding, um, whereas Apex Legends, you know, 9%, 9%, like there's a lot of big gains here, although a large chunk of games here are not boosted. Also, not all of these games are DX11. This is a full 50 game benchmark not just DX11. Now, a few games uh, did see small uh, decreases, although um, all but one of them, I would just chalk up to margin of error. Um, it's only Godfall that seemed to have a 8%, which is actually noticeable decrease. And again, these are the 1080p results. They saw slightly different results at 1440p and 4K, although the net result was uh, was positive, but I'd like to point you to their actual full video uh, to get more of these details. Now, my biggest question on this driver is as a preview driver, is it buggy? So I'm curious if we, when we get the full release, because when I looked into the comment sections on this, I did see some people uh, reporting some issues with these drivers. However, um, Hardware Unboxed did not mention any issues in this full review. So this is extremely interesting, and this would help make, uh, you know, AMD GPUs 
again, even better value than they already were. So even though this is only 3% average on af average, uh, faster on average in the, in the 50 game benchmark, you can see that there are individual titles here which saw huge benefits. So with this in mind, AMD GPUs are continuing given their price decreases to also offer uh, extremely good value. I just posted as of filming, this probably actually posted before this video will, that I spotted a 6800 XT this morning for $770 um, on Amazon in stock. So if you check my community page, um, yeah, we're seeing some, some big cuts. And I, I saw an RX 6600 coming in $30 below MS, MSRP at 300. So yeah, value-wise, it does seem like the AMD prices are coming down while their performance is going up. So that's all good stuff. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.